anyway, starting up immediately where we left off last time, you're planning to head to the uh, uh, to the outer sea. But by the way, uh, I've actually looked up some lore. Um, I mentioned I had a few ideas to how to get you out there. I've oh. actually had that erased on me now. So wait, we're going to? I, I thought we were. I thought that the the other pirates had showed up in the southern part of this sea. They have. I have some ideas of how they got there, but apparently there's uh, supposedly, according to lore, there is no way there. But I have a few ideas. But uh, speaking of which, I'm going to say that the discussion about that has come up here as well as before. I'm going to say that while there's no known for sure route, there are many multiple rumored routes to the south. Which is why they the uh, pirates happen to appear there first. Okay. And also, when we left off last time, uh, Zena was being asked point blank uh, who it was that she had uh, her particular fight with before she left the uh, the Western Sea. Right. Maybe it's just me, but the music seems like it's a little loud. It is it a was. little bit. I, I, am I turned tweak it, it down. I, I, you tweaked it down for yourself, maybe. I just want to tweak it down a little bit more. There. That's better. It picked up. It picked up and it got louder than what it was when I had it set. Yeah. Um. Who asked me this? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I, I think it was. I think it was Thelona. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Thelona. Well, the. Well. I actually discussed this with Matt uh, mm -hmm. uh, in between uh, now last, actually just really recently. <laughs> in the last couple days, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, what was it I said? Um, the, 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 um, the pirate, the pirates that attacked my crew were known as the Raiders of the Eclipse. Okay, so Matt. Okay. I came up through the south end along the coast. Yep. I want to know if I heard anything about this group. Uh, of the group that Ozian just mentioned? Yes. Um. S stuff being said in bars, anything as I worked my way around the south side uh, around the yeah, south side Yeah, so you went yeah, you went around the point. south side like about a month or so ago, correct? Something like Ish. that. Like like a, like a couple of weeks or more before you bumped into this crew. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what? Give me a uh give me a history check with a advantage, please. What if Lena heard on her from her part of the world anything about these pirates are they famous or are they not famous or... uh you wouldn't know because you're really just landlocked where you're at where you live right so they're not like so nothing will pass yeah. in through yeah. there R remember remember when i mentioned when I, I i i made the comment about anyone want to be a pirate everyone just looked at me like i was weird because they probably didn't really know what a pirate was <laughs> uh, uh, I know some people get so infamous that their tra word travels all over. I was just wondering if it was like one of those situations. Um, where good to, to it could be that it's starting to get to some traffic, but it would be more of a traffic in the western shores right now, more so right. than it would be anywhere near Hyperborea. Which was what I was asking. It's just secluded in certain areas. Yeah, it's mostly a coast thing, and maybe some stuff has been passing up. Which, by the way, roll to 12. I'm going to say you didn't hear much, but yeah, I don't think you, I don't even think you heard the name, but you did hear whispers about pirates coming up from literally every which way but loose from the south. Okay, I just wanted to know if I heard anything in particular. So um, and I will no. say that you also heard very faint, like once or twice rumors about maybe a recent pirate group getting a little bit big for their britches. Some new boys rolled into town, and apparently they're shooting up the place pretty good. All right. Their uh, their captain is a man who calls himself Baron Vic Stern. 
he uh he seemed to want to press other people on the sea into swearing loyalty to him and if they didn't well you know what happened to my crew What happened to the old crew, yes. <laughs> if he's come out here, I can only assume maybe he ran into someone he couldn't handle and he decided to head to a different sea. Are you going to uh, mention what uh, you remember? Uh, um, Reb named uh, Salona? No, because it already everything that that you said was stuff we'd already heard. Because that's basically what I was told before that is that there was some new group down there making a fuss. So, uh, and that's pretty much what we already know, isn't it? Um, actually, I'm not sure if the rest of the group knew that or not. Uh, Galena's gonna ask Azina. We only knew, we only knew they were down in that area because. Uh, Someone they had sent up here that we uh, got information out of had sh uh, shown us where their meeting place was. Right. Uh, Blaine's going to ask Ozina, um, do you have any other information about them? Like, are they... Do they have motive or anything? Well, the motive seems to be conquest of the sea. And... Uh, I kind of pause for a minute and go, you know how I have magic and don't really have an explanation for it? Slow nods. <laughs> yeah. Still nods from a couple nod. of them. <laughs> their, their leader had similar abilities, except his seemed to be a lot more vicious while most of my abilities aren't direct attacks in fact um, during the fight between my crew and his I think he actually summoned a demon onto the ship so dark magic then yeah that right. immediately gets an eyebrow raised from uh Theobald. And a grumpy crossed arms from Garoth. Lloyd <laughs> just goes, How can someone summon such an abomination? It's more common than you realize. Yeah. And that alone <laughs> worries me. <laughs> and I'm sure that might explain to some of you that were there why I didn't really flinch at the sight of the night gaunts because those things didn't look as mean as what he summoned <clears throat> just a, a slightly angry grunt from the the, uh, the, bar the male barbarian as he's just kind of pondering a man that summons demons this can't be good <laughs> uh, well, thinks about a thought for a second and then gives it says to uh, Azina maybe what? Oh, uh, maybe if summon demon, he had to learn it from somewhere. Maybe there's a clue in a library or something that can help us find him. Like if he's using dark magic, he had to have a source from it. Perhaps. From my experience, those who use that kind of dark magic usually do a uh, pact with some form of demon or dark god. Uh, Boina takes her amulet and just kind of presses her hand in it kind of religiously and uh, kind of tries to mutter a prayer to Dark Ghetto. Just kind of a sign of warning uh, the thought of someone worshipping a dark god. Alright. And, uh, I was, you know, you know, just hearing all this is just kind of looking down at her own hands going, and I just feel like my power came to me so that I could use it to stop him. Uh, 
That gets another kind of eyebrow raise from the cleric. <laughs> How do you mean it came to you? It manifested shortly after the attack on my previous ship. That is I can't really peculiar. Yeah. I can't really explain why I have it, but it just kind of comes to me naturally. Takes a big swallow, and maybe if you remember what the demon looks like, next time we hit port, we can look at the library and try to figure out what kind of demon it was so we can have a better idea what kind of dark magic we're dealing with. You're very quiet, by the way. Sorry, uh, she basically uh, that was... yeah, I, I caught what you said, it's just that we could just barely hear you. And yeah, that was uh, on purpose because she's kind of nervous. Um, I go, I mean, we could out of character <laughs> real quick, though. I didn't mention anything about the demon part to Matt, though, so he's going to have to make it up as he goes. <laughs> no, no uh, uh, yeah, you did not mention the demon part to me before, but I've got an idea how that could work. I got a couple ideas how that could work. Uh, in, so any, in any place, Captain, what are we going to set our course for? Actually, we're still at town, so if Elena really wanted to check the library... Um, no, no, that's fine. I mean, when we depart, where are we going? Um, shit, uh, we, we don't have the map open currently, so oh. I can't really... Because I'm assuming we have to have a map. Uh, in the actual oh, ship. Oh, yeah, but... in the actual ship, yeah, you, uh, there's no... You, you but, catch a case of death if you don't have a map. <laughs> but, um... Wasn't it, like, one of these groups of islands down here in the south was where they mentioned was the meeting place? Oh, uh, you mean, um... Uh, Roger's old group? Yeah, or no, no. The, um... Because Tarthoon had worked for one of the people from this crew temporarily, and he had mentioned where their meeting place was. Um, I'm trying to remember that <laughs> because that was that was so long ago. Because that was where I was suggesting we go when we ended up having to we ended up taking a detour and going to, to take care of Elena's thing instead. But now we have more backstory and, and, and lore <laughs> to work with than we would have back then where it was just going to be generic pirates. Uh, I want to say Tarthoon for sure mentioned the South, but I don't remember it being a particular island. Well, I know that much for sure. I just don't remember it being an island, but I do recall him basically saying it was somewhere to the South. Let me see if I can zoom in uh, and see what are these um, ships are there. Well, we're at ship poor right now because we got to head to the south. We might as well we might as well go to the next uh, town along the 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 the, the, the land, which would be uh, Sultanapur. Sultanapur, yeah. Sultanapur, because. If we're gonna um, travel, if we're gonna travel such a distance, we might as well at least make a stop along the way. Which is bigger, Matt, Sultanapur or Agripur? Um, actually, according to the uh, the left map, uh, Sultanapur looks to be much bigger. Okay. Whereas the other one, they're just both dots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The other one, they're just us. On, on the other, on the left map, though, you can tell that the Sultanfer is a lot bigger. There seems to be more towers, and there seems to be something even bigger in the background, possibly some sort of uh, structure for uh, local uh, legislature, if you will. I'm not sure if they actually... I'm not going to presume without research that they have kings there or not. Uh, Although most actually, of these places do. This, 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 is, this is probably something Ozina should point out. Um, he goes, uh, and uh, it, it is worth noting, just so everybody knows this and there's no uh, questions about it later, uh, Tarthoon's 
old captain was part of that crew, although I believe she's the only member of their their group that he actually interacted with. Uh, Tarthun kind of nods a little bit. I talked to the little bit of the others, Captain, but the previous captain, she's definitely the one that came out of the south. I think the others have been around for a while before. So, it makes sense that he would have that that they would expand their their group like that since they seem to want to control the sea. I was trying to find out what, what I can find about Sapur really quick, and I'm not seeing anything. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, okay, so there's a capital and everything there. Oh wow. So yeah, uh -huh. it's that's a island that's actually populated with people. One of the few in the Viliat Sea. Oh, Zapur? Yeah, Zapur. Uh, with the X. It's apparently one of the few human-held islands in the Viliat Sea. Um, there's lots of other islands, but people would damn near well stay as far away as they could if they uh, had the choice. <laughs> Assuming mostly wildlife or something, or monsters. Wildlife and worse. <laughs> uh, also, uh, not to mention lots and lots of... Uh, I've looked into the details about this too, uh, and you might have heard rumors and whispers of this since you've been around the Viliat Sea for off and on for a couple weeks now. Uh, a lot of those islands have mysteriously dark rocks that form a lot of them. And a lot of those rocks also tend to have a, a lot of veins of iron in them, which is why there's the Isle of Iron statues, because uh, the statues themselves are already made out of iron, but they're also made of basically placed on top of ruins that have been long since abandoned, and the rocks themselves have grown a strange dark color, and people just not touch. And there have been rumors of people accidentally visiting them and having a rough time getting back off of them. So don't head to those islands unless we absolutely have to. Mm-hmm. I will say, out of character, you don't guys don't know this yet, but Konyan did visit one of them. Uh, let's just say a whole bunch of things start chasing him all at once, and he's lucky he stole away his ship and got out of there. to Azina goes what's the plan now captain do we set sail now or um yeah what, we, what time we, is it I'd say um I believe yeah I believe you guys actually got there around the morning ish of that day as I recall it's like maybe almost hitting noon in an hour or so. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, whenever you got there in the morning, you decided to go take a break, grab some things quick, and you already hit the library, by the way. Yeah, that, that's what I was like thinking. Maybe the next town, which is probably bigger, probably has a bigger uh, library. Uh, uh, more information. Let me let me compare really quick. Hmm. They look about the same. So yeah, there's a chance that they might have something else. Right. So admittedly, you weren't looking specifically for this information when you're at the library, but um, mm -hmm. I, I I say we might as well get moving just because it will be, uh, we'll uh, we'll never leave if we don't. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And we got another big town or city that we're stopping at along the way. Uh, with the captain's permission, I would like a couple of hours first. All right. I want to check. I want to do some final checks on some equipment. Okay. 
Okay, Matt. All right. I I was going to poll and do this, but since I'm under limited time, I'm just going to guess. Is there anybody in town that sells weapons? Oh yeah, you, per, this is a big enough town. The market has per, got per, at least one or two guys with weapons. Particularly Bogiers, Fletchers. Oh, uh, so you're looking for a ranged weapon? Yes. Yeah, you can find uh, someone who's probably a, a Fletcher that's decently experienced in it. Because I want to buy three longbows and a frack ton of arrows. I'd just like to buy a barrel of arrows. <laughs> okay, wait, just a real quick question. If you're planning on buying those for the crew, keep in mind that not everyone, not every class is able to use a longbow. I'm aware of that. But certain members of our party recently reclassed into barbarians. Barbarians gain martial weapon proficiency, which allows them to use longbow. Oh my god, that means you still can use a longbow. Unfortunately, yep. she has a magic short bow, doesn't she? Yes, but... And I would say that when we're on land, that would be the best idea. But if we decide to do ranged volley fire, everybody's going to want a longbow that can use it. A whole bunch of 1d8s flying through the air with yeah. the rest of ease while on fire, I might add. Yes. So, I, and actually, technically, I think I can actually use a longbow, um, even though I don't. Um... I'll check your yes, character because, sheet because... to save martial training. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have martial weapons, so yes, I can use a longbow. I just, for some reason, never did. <laughs> I just kept using throwing knives instead. Okay, so you're looking at two longbows, yes? Three longbows. Three. Three I have bows. one, so that's a total of four longbows that we'll have in reserve. So three of them will run you uh, 150 100. gold. Yep. yep. And then a barrel of arrows. Is there a barrel of arrows item listed? <laughs> no, but I'm hoping for a discount because I'm buying in bulk. Uh, you just, <laughs> I, think, I think they get sold in, tw in groups Tax of 20. of 20 for a gold. So I'm thinking... I'm buying probably 10 gold worth. That'd be 200 arrows. Do you know what? Well, 200 well, arrows. While Thelone is doing this, me and Valena might as well go back to the library. So, yeah, for buying so much in bulk, they'll like give you a really good trade of just 8 gold for all of them. Okay. And then the guy can close shop early and he gets to uh, spend the rest of his uh, evening making more arrows. <laughs> I just bought right. him out of arrow. Didn't yeah, I? He, yeah, just you, about. You bought you bought ma the majority of his stock. <laughs> Definitely I'll a majority of his stock. Of, I'll, so I'll, I'll he'll 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 sell more <laughs> arrows to anyone who asks. <laughs> but otherwise, he's made his big sale for today. <laughs> he needs to get more. Uh, he needs to get more uh, materials. I'm just picturing this little guy just going. There's gold in these uh, arrow market. Oh, lucky day. I sure and don't then he takes all the arrows and we've traveled on and he sells nothing the next day. <laughs> I, need, I need to go whittle some more arrows. Not every day I get the big buyers, but they come by once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's off. Right. Uh, so, uh, Zine and Belena go to the library while this is happening. All right. Right. Um... Oh, boy. Um, I didn't actually think up a description for the demon, though. <laughs> That's a good question. What kind of demon are we looking at here? I say something nasty. I'm not sure what demons exist in Conan. Technically, a lot of shit exists in Conan because people can essentially rip open the void and accidentally cause all kinds of stupid shit. So technically, all the D&D &D demons kind of still exist in some form or another, maybe with slightly different names. Yeah, it's just that I don't want to name any of those because I don't know their CR ratings off the top of my head. <laughs> but come on, it's fun. Because <laughs> I know that if Says I say... the oh, GM it, who's it, not against it, throwing it, everything at you. Yeah, because I, I know if I say, oh, it was a Balor, we'd be dead. 
<laughs> fucking dead. We wouldn't survive that. Oh, let me see here. Is it? In, yeah, my main Conan book is in here. Double checking that this is. Okay, yeah, it's not on the uh, stream. Just want to make sure I don't want to be flashing all the background work I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, that's the horror, that's the creatures book. That's the cults book. Here we go. Player's handbook. There's some really, like quick off the cuff basic demons that they had in here. Um let me pick up the big one. That's the third digital book I have open now. <laughs> Let's see here. Glossary. Demons, demons, demons. I'm looking for demons. Okay, not by name. Uh, I'll move that under something else. Equipment sorcery? No, that's for character stuff, I think. Um, Just should probably page down here really fast and see what I bump into. Because I'm pretty sure it doesn't take hard to find demon imagery and go, yeah, there's where they start talking about them. Let's just grab this and pull. Oh. We know they had pirate captains and pirate minions already in the base book for Conan. <laughs> yeah, well, isn't, isn't that like a got stats for like a separate game? It's a it's a different set. It's a different like like rule set and everything, but it at least gives you ideas for what can happen. Oh, like deep dwellers. No, 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 Matt. Don't tell us anything that you might throw against us. What? You don't like the idea of a mummified sorcerer? Uh... That does sound pretty cool. No, 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 no. Oh, here we go. Otherworldly horrors. There. This is probably what we're looking for. Ooh, that's an interesting title for a creature name. Creature of the far reaches of the skies. And Devil of the Outer Dark. Am I the only one who's creeped out? He's having too much fun with this. <laughs> no, no, this is Conan. I've been expecting this kind of shit. <clears throat> you, 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 we, made him, we made him look at the Conan lore. <laughs> uh... It was inevitable. Actually, it sounds like the Devil of the Outer Dark might be kind of close to what you're looking for. Uh, I'll give a quick example here. These uh, Devil of the Outer Dark, these demons are a vile, horrifying creature that dwells in the dark gulf of the night beyond the skies, and their numbers are beyond counting. A few find their way to Earth, where they uh, clothe themselves in vile parodies of earthly flesh. They are creatures of utter darkness, with great bat-like wings, shrieking maws, and yet beyond those details, little is known. As few who have ever faced these demons can actually accurately describe them or wish to. Oh, and it also des describes how difficult it is to summon the creature, if you are using their game setting. Yeah. <laughs> I, and the thing is, I, I while you're doing this, I was looking through the monster manual for like something that would actually be a combat rating that would make sense for us. And I kind of looked at the demon on uh, Glabrazu, which is a CR nine. Uh, somebody's got constantly rustling right now. That was me. I mm. I just realized I forgot to take my pills. So. Ah. Okay. Uh, um. But yeah, that sounds like your basic level demon, and apparently it's summonable by mages and other people, so it's not impossible that 
could be what you summoned. What you saw summoned, rather. So essentially, uh, as far as you can tell, this Devil of the Outer Dark was summoned by the, the Pirate Captain. It's a creature that seems to be made of darkness, but it was made flesh upon its summoning. And so instead of just being pure black, you just see this freakish imitation of uh, basically scaled flesh with bat wings and a uh, snarling maw that opened up and starts snapping up people. You got a picture that we can see or... or no? um, actually, I'm not sure if they provide a picture here. No, I think this the picture they provide here sadly is the forest devil. What's it called? Uh, devil of the Outer Dark. Let's see if they if I can actually find something. Yeah, you, you, there, there's images on on. Uh, Somehow, I'm not totally I surprised. In fact, I think it's one of the things I saw with the the other thing I was looking at, which is called just called a dark demon. The only thing is, it's one of those things where it doesn't seem to want to fucking lo finish loading. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I've got one. I'm unsure of it to load up. So, I posted in the. Oh yeah, I'm gonna check it and see what you had posted in there and see if it's the same one I was looking at. Very similar. I'd say that's similar enough to be correct. I think it's the same thing. It's just yours is a miniature instead of a rendition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically the this creature with bat-like wings, and I'm going to also go over here and post it in a tab here so people can see it. Looks vaguely familiar, Matt. Kinda do, uh, does, don't it? Kind of look, looks like a bat demon, don't you think? Oh yeah. <laughs> a little different, but some a similarities. A little bit different, but some similarities. So d uh, probably not a uh, far-off cousin. Oh hell, I see. Did you have to pick that one, the Glabrazu? <laughs> You're just looking up what I mentioned. Yeah, it's like I've had bad memories of fighting this thing. <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing is, it's a CR rating 9, which um, a 9 is an equal fight for four characters of that level, and there's six of us plus my crew. So technically, so, you should be able to take it. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, it wouldn't be by itself. The other pirates would be helping it. Yes. In fact, uh, if you killed its uh, controlling sorcerer, it most likely would go wild and not just disappear. Yeah, it's so, but anyhow, we're since, we're, look, since we're trying to look up this, should me and, Vol and Valena both roll something? Yes, you're trying to f figure out exactly what you found, so... Uh, would Valena roll with advantage, or...? Um, yeah, I'd say you roll with advantage, since you've got Ozzy there to help you try and page through so, things. history with advantage, right? Pretty much. Would it be history or arcana? Um, actually, I will allow a chance at both. Uh, actually, uh, Azina can roll for history, and uh, Valena can check Arcana. Should I be rolling with advantage as well? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't freaking matter. Boom. You're both paging through books, and it takes Valena only a couple minutes, and just goes, wait a second, this looks about right, and pulls out page, and you almost have flashbacks seeing the thing sketched out. The, uh, the big talons, the bat-like wings, this hideous, nasty face full of teeth, um, the dark form that, uh, represents it otherwise, yeah, this is looking about right. Uh, Zena kind of shudders. Was the last thing I saw before I was knocked overboard. Uh, Blaina looks further into book and see if there are any connections to any dark gods or anything like that, or normal. Stuff. Um, the, uh, basically, it reads the same as I just read to you like a few moments ago. As far as they're aware, these things fr uh, come from a plane of just pure shadow and darkness, and 
Uh, outside the fact that they are nasty, horrific creatures, the only people that would know more are wizards who summon them in the first place, and they ain't talking, and their victims aren't talking either. Oof. Except for the few that barely managed to escape and run in panic. No, oh, I didn't do that, and, uh... Uh... Blaine is good. Uh... See... Ozzyana freaking out, close the book. And just kind of pull her in for a friendly hug and try and comfort her. I wasn't really freaking out, I just shuddered. Oh. Well, too late now. They're there. <laughs> There, there. Let the wizard glomp you. Uh, so you do find, without too much effort, you do find what you're looking for. And yes, this is uh, apparently a nasty piece of work that only comes up once in a while. Uh, is there anything else anybody else wants to do? Is that everything? Um, question for you, Matt. Yes. Does Garroth have a grappling hook? Actually, didn't somebody buy grappling hooks at one point, but we didn't use them? I bought one for myself. I didn't buy it for anyone else. So, that would be a no. Technically, Ozina has one, and that's about it. All right, I'm going I to think, buy I it. Think, I, I think I'm not the only one that bought one, but, not, but it wasn't everyone that bought one. Then yeah. I'm buying a 50-foot rope and grappling hook for Garroth. Garroth is probably just sitting at the boat playing uh, uh, ship guard like he usually does. Suddenly he finds himself imagining mountain climbing and he doesn't know why. <laughs> Actually, Delano will uh, go up, put the rope grappling hook and just keep hold of this. You just you just walk up with it and just hand it to him, and yes. tell him to keep a hold of this. Kind of blinks, looks it over, and shrugs. Okay, and uh, really quickly just kind of finds a place to uh, hang it off his belt for the time being. So I assume after a while the girls come back after uh, successfully finding their research. Right. Yeah. At least the library was useful for something today. <laughs> As I recall, the rest were duds. Um. So are you going to... Then the question becomes, I guess, are you going to set off right away? Um, I'd say it's maybe just past noon. Uh... Unless somebody else has something they want to do, we might as well go, because uh, uh, my crew finished the delivery they were making already, right? Yeah, they were already unloading when you uh, called uh, for a meeting in a little while, and by the time they were done, you go ahead and finally come back. Wasn't the ship being repaired? Um, they were also doing repairs, but uh, being that they're in the shipyard, they've actually got extra hands, and it's not just going to be... Uh... Not just going to be Port Gunter on his own, so he, he, the shipyard will lend a hand, and uh, it doesn't take that much extra gold to get uh, people in planks. And the, the, you, there were scorch marks, but the thing is, scorch marks doesn't mean the actual thing itself is unusable. Yeah, yeah. but Matt had, Matt had said something about making minor repairs. Mm hmm. And they were already doing that while things were getting unloaded, so by this point, uh, any major damage has already been repaired. Any other little bits and bobs can be stuff that Gunther can easily take care of while you're on the water. By the way, I remember the ship was named, but I forget what the ship was named. The the Ocean's Vengeance. Ah, that's right. I remember, I remember something along the lines of Revenge, but I can't remember what the full thing was. We got a big wooden bear head at the front of the ship big wooden bear head in the front of the ship and your uh, occasionally raised black and white flag is a bear with what was it cross um, rapiers or was it something else uh, it, it was uh, oh shit it had something in its mouth I'm trying to remember what it was uh... I know it was the bear itself had, a, had an eye patch <laughs> I remember that 
Oh, did it, uh, did it have like an eye patch and like a dagger in its mouth or something? I, I think it had a sword in its mouth. Okay, so it was probably a curved blade of some kind that was just uh, buried in its teeth and it's just like, eh. Hey. All right. So now it's time for the bear to hunt the demon. So setting off, uh, I believe you're planning to go do south. Yep. In either map, it's pretty much just south along the same shoreline. I'm going to go trust the um, the left one a little bit more. It just seems cleaner and better put together. So, yeah, you're starting at uh, Shapur, and you're going to head to... Uh, Sultanapur. I thought we were at Khorasan. Or no. Hmm? Were we at Khorasan or Shapur? Shapur. Shapur. Okay. Uh, you gotta be looking, looking at the left one, you're at Shapur. <laughs> okay. Because, yeah, you they got back to Shapur, which is where you guys uh, took off before meeting. Thelona uh, across the sea in uh, Harkania. So taking a trip all the way to that far south, um, you can travel most of that and see possibly, could possibly keep the shoreline in your sight if you really wanted to. Or you could just take the literally the direct shot south and uh, Skip a little bit of extra sightseeing. Hmm. We might as well take a straight, straight shot how, south. How good is our navigator? Well, he hasn't lost you yet, so. Uh, Conrad has not failed at his job that to, as of yet to date, and he managed to get the ship around even without you guys on it, so. Is Conrad the ship's pilot, too? Uh, when you guys are gone? I think, um... I think... He, he I, Conrad's a should... navigator, I think Roger kind of takes over, uh, actually piloting the ship when you guys are gone. Yeah, I, th well, I no. think... Well, basically in combat, somebody's got to be at the helm, and you're usually fighting. Right. Um... I if think nobody, Conrad... I think, it's, I think it swaps... Drifts. I think it swaps I... between Conrad and Roger when in the middle of a fight, depending on who's closer. Yeah, or or the carpenter because he's not like the most combat person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or Gunter because at least he can steer the thing, but he's just like, where do I go? Where do I go? <laughs> yeah, you want in combat, you want somebody that knows how how to steer. Right. I don't think they got brought up before because we weren't. I don't think we were thinking about that at the time. But uh, I've been thinking about this for two weeks. I think it would. If it, I like. I don't think we really. We really did the mechanics of it before. But I'd say it probably would make the most sense for it to be Roger because aside from me, he has the most sea experience. Yes. Although okay. Tarthun does bring that out into question, but at the same time, Tarthun has always been more of a ship mage more than an actual, like, involved with piloting the ship kind of person. Yeah. Because it's yeah. very hard to pilot a ship and use magic at the same time. Yep. He's good. He's good. He'd be, he's, a, he's good as a substitute leader, not necessarily a ship pilot. Mm hmm. Curious. No, not really. All right. <laughs> I, I was uh, double checking what Tarthun had for spells. So I was wondering if maybe he had some sort of wind magic or something. Nope, never mind. I could technically use wind magic. I just got to cast Shatter far enough behind the sails so that the force will push the sails. Actually, I think Dren uh, Trentian would. I think there is a spell called Gust or something. Gust of wind or something like that. There's there's a couple of different like wind pushing spells. Uh, yeah, because that's usually more druidy than it is uh, regular wizardy. 
Uh, Trentian, does he have any kind of... Sure, craft, wrist flame, uh, resistance, guidance. Chomp, healing, word, good berry, detect magic, purify food and water. That's arrow, magic, image, uh, wind... Wind wall, not quite it. <laughs> water walk, water breathing, and protection from energy. Bloody every other class has a protection from energy spell. <laughs> I'm not even sure what does. I just figured I'd throw it in there in case it does end up being useful. <laughs> Let's see. Gust of Wind is what? A second level spell. Yeah. It's only usable by druid, sorcerers, and wizards. So technically there are a couple of people that could have it, but I don't think any of them do at the moment. There's which also means... there's also Gust, which is a cantrip, which is a druid, sorcerer, and wizard cantrip, but it's obviously not as effective as Gust of Wind. No, that's like, you know, basically an, over, an overpowered version of going... Yeah. You can push an object that weighs no more than five pounds up to ten feet. Is basically yeah. what it can do. Yeah, so it does absolutely nothing. It's base. It's basically, it's basically if like a, a force user from Star Wars is not very good yet, and they can just push small objects. So you go put a wind in the sails for about a, five seconds. It, like like I said, it's the equivalent of sitting behind a toy sailboat blowing at it. It's a guy that turned wiser. This guy moved a pebble. <laughs> he moved the pebble. <laughs> so that um, does mean that in combat, we are also going to be at the mercy of wind direction. That's true if I were being on the water, to be honest, but yeah. So just a straight shot to uh, Sultanapur. You know, I, I can't help but point this out, but just, I, I find it amusing looking at one of these maps where Vanaheim, the V, because it's over top of the mountain, you don't really see it, so it looks like it says Anaheim. <laughs> On the right map, like you can barely see the V oh. for Vanaheim, so it looks like it says Anaheim. Well, I think yeah. that's a few centuries too soon. We ever get there? We ever get there? There's a sign we're rushing from Asgard into Vanaheim, saying "Welcome to Vanaheim, home of the mighty ducks." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then the next sign says, "Ride the Dukes." <laughs> uh, immediately, one of the characters breaks the fourth wall and turns around, and goes, "What? Are we in Wisconsin?" And all of a sudden, something hits him from behind. <laughs> I've been struck by cheese. Also home of the hatch chili pepper. <laughs> if you guys get that reference. Or fall by four wall breaking. Uh <laughs> Alright, so trying to guess how long it's gonna take. I'd say that's Well, um, where's the wind coming from, Matt? Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, which wave does is the wind gonna be blowing for you guys today? It's coming from the north because you mere farted. <laughs> um It's coming from the set or from the south cuz set blows. <laughs> <laughs> um did you did GM is trying to take a serious consideration as to how the hell the wind even works here? And everyone's just making god jokes. <laughs> hmm, this is why the GM is just gonna pick a uh, number between one and four, and that's where it's coming from today. After he rolls a die. <laughs> well, if you're gonna roll a die, roll a d8. There's eight different wind directions, because remember, you're gonna oh, get north. True. <laughs> so, number one is gonna be north, and it goes clockwise into. Uh, North e uh, northwest. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. All right. 
So number Everything eight will be I've northwest, ever... and then number one will be north, and etc. So six. So that would South. be the west, I think. No. No, no, southwest. Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, blowing from the southwest, which means that it would actually be blowing against you. Unless yes, you completely be. turn the sails to the east. Well, we can. In this case, you can pick up a we, little bit, but you're not going to pick up much. Well, we can tack against it, but it does mean that we're moving at basically half speed. Yeah, so your first stay out is going to be a slow start. Well, I'm trying to think does this ship have oars? No. No, not boat this big. Not a boat this big with a crew this small. Because there is a bigger boat that has oars, but mind you, it's like a hundred man galley. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then the entire bomb floor is probably going to be people of oars. <laughs> yeah. All right. Picture is a gaffed drum being uh, a bunch of guys in chains and beneath the deck going, That's a long boat. No, that's a galley, too. Well, I guess that's a smaller galley, but still, yeah. Uh, so, actually, your first day is going to be really slow, so what do you guys do as you're slowly going out into the water? Um, I'm going to try my hand at fishing. Okay, I, I assume just tempting to get free restock. Wow, and that's actually a pretty solid roll. Uh, I'm going to say, let's use this system. Yeah, it's above that, so I'm going to say we're going to use this. And you know, over a hour or so of fishing, you do manage to catch roughly about 15 fish. Some of them aren't okay. particularly huge, but you do catch a couple of decent sized ones. I mean, if we're, if we're sailing super slow because of the wind, I might as well make use of the time. True. I'm gathering Garroth, Giselle, and Theobald. And I'm letting them familiarize themselves with the longbow. Okay, how are they going to be able to do that, though? Mm -hmm. Are you, like, going to do some sort of target practice? Yeah. Um, mostly, though, it would be, uh, well, would, Giselle needs the least amount of familiarization because she's used to a short bow, so she just has to get used to the extended length. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as I'm aware, Theobald and, uh, Garroth have never actually fired a bow. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, Theobald, not that I can remember. I think both of them swapped out, uh, using the sling. <laughs> well, Garroth used the crossbow. But, Garroth but... occasionally uses the crossbow, and he's actually had extraordinarily high luck. <laughs> well, I'm so going they... to try to... So they need a target, right? Yep. Okay, quick question, Matt. Mm -hmm. Do you rule animate dead as a, po a skeleton has to be a pile of bones or just a, a part one bone? Uh, animate a skeleton yeah, it has to be the full bone pile of bones. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, you're not going to just get a skeleton out of a femur. There's some okay. parts missing there. I think his, I think his idea was to, to animate an incomplete skeleton just to have as a target. Yeah, but that kind of defeats the logic of the spell as far as I'm aware. I, as far as I'm aware, you actually need the full body there. Okay. As much as you can get of it, at least. And I guess that idea is drawn. I just guess Blanche is going to hang in, in her room just keeping to herself, just researching and Or, or just watching as uh, the people who... Uh, don't Do have, have your skills have to practice trying to imitate them as best they can with a bunch of pointy sticks. Oh, hell no. She's staying downstairs. If they never fired a bow before and they miss, she's staying downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. hell no. I don't trust my hubby. I'm going to hide in the basement. <laughs> so this is my plan. There's enough spare material here that I could make a makeshift target, right? Well, there is, there is the empty uh, alcohol kegs. Oh, I suppose that's definitely a possibility, yeah. There should probably be a couple empty kegs from um, you, food storage and use. 
No, Wait. because we 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 busted. Oh, all from the from the night before, yeah. Meeting. So you probably ended on at least one of them. So you know, you basically tack a bit of cloth onto that with a makeshift bullseye on it. Drop it in the water behind. Wait till it gets out to range, and then have them practice fire. So they're Even all just in the yet, back of the wanna, boat trying to shoot. It, you you want to keep it. You tie a rope around it, let it run. So you yeah. know I've got a hundred feet of rope, so that'll help them at least get to get to short range. And then I can reel it in when they're done. Mm -hmm. My other my other thought was to make a makeshift target, uh, put it out on the uh, on the um, the small boat. And let it drift out to range, tied to a rope. But either way, rather not damage the boat. That was my one worry about that. Because we actually used that thing. And someone accidentally hits the rope, and immediately the canoe goes off into the ocean on its own, off into the sea on its own. Bye bye, canoe. We hardly knew you. No, we didn't. I've known you since the beginning of the game. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> you just lost. <laughs> lost forever. That was how we got to Shadowsire was we went up the river on my fucking canoe. Just the three of us. Just the three of us. We can make it if we try. Just the three of us. Two of us hitting on Garoth. <laughs> 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 but either way, um, I'm just getting them some practice and to familiarize. I still haven't figured out who's getting the fourth bow. Um. So actually, uh, I'm gonna just say I'm gonna roll at random to see what their what their averages look like. Uh, Gareth does tackle. okay. He occasionally hits target. Oh. Um. Uh, Theobald actually does relatively well. He rolled a 16. And, ooh. If it wasn't for the fact that Giselle's already highly skilled, she wouldn't have hit the broadside of a barn. She's just having a hard time with this big bow. Just not used to it, huh? Yeah, she, she, she's noticing she needs some practice with something this big. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll give her some pointers. Um... I get part of it might just be that you, she might have not she might not have the strength for it, but that's a maybe. But again, enough enough practice that's she might get thing, over it. it. it <laughs> it's it's you know a longer pull because it's a longer bow. So mm -hmm. anything else you guys want to do the first day out? No, I figure I'm doing this for about two three hours. I guess Felina will study the little idol she bought from the shop. All right. Just kind of looking it over, or are you doing anything particular with it? Just looking over to see what she can make out of it. It's a small... Uh, you're talking about the first one, or the one you just recently bought? The one you just recently bought. Seems to be a small little stone piece. Uh, made it look like Darketo. Uh... Arms stretched out to her sides, kind of a almost welcoming, almost hug stance, if you will. If you were to be someone that was the same size walking up to that, um, she doesn't seem to be in any particular vicious look on her face. Um, and as you're studying it, it's this strange, dark stone. And the longer you focus on it, the more it seems to like pulse of this strange, almost purplish energy to it. And you realize you're almost focusing too much and almost get corruption of it and quickly back out of that. So I, would remind, just, I would remind you that if you focused on this long enough, you could gain corruption, which would at the same time multiply your dice for magic casting, but would also reduce your constitution so your hit points would suddenly take a dive. You know that one Asian guy. I also realized you didn't you didn't let us see his character sheet either. That's why I probably didn't see his health bar. 
Um, he's not on. He's not on the journal. Yeah, list, I'm right? kind of keeping him hush hush. I do have okay. a character sheet for him made, but yeah, he's a okay. bit of a special case compared to some oh, of the other NPCs. What was his name again? Sabutai. Yep, I know who he is. <laughs> I knew Randy would. His thing is, that he's an archer. Um. Yes, he's very skilled, actually. As a matter of fact, actually, as you guys are doing practice off the back, you do see Sabotai kind of smile as you as you're all practicing. And while you're taking a quick break to re uh, gain arrows for a moment, he actually just kind of walks up unprompted, draws back, and I'm gonna roll for him. Because I guarantee you he's going to hit this like almost like no problem. Thinking I recognize him rising more and more. Um, I know oh. him, but I know him. The... There we go. Oh, yeah. He just walks up, pulls back. <laughs> Whack. Middle of the dot. Smiles. That seems I've not lost my touch, and starts wandering back off into the rest of the boat. <laughs> what was uh, what was what were the specialties of the other two crewmates, Carnwin and uh, Nuraster? Um, I'm just putting these down for just two, like the two new ones, uh, Carwin and uh, Nuraster. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember if they had a, spe spe a certain thing they were specialized at, or if they were just um. Looking at uh, Nurster, he is apparently very fluent in Aquilonian. Uh, he even has a slight accent to it compared to most people. So it's obvious he's from the West Coast, at the very least. Um, you do see that he has a rapier on his side, and uh, uh, you don't haven't seen him really practice, at least not publicly, but he does seem to keep that, that thing with him at all times. And he's a very well-groomed man, even though he still has facial hair. Um, as for, uh, Carwin, uh, he's a bigger black guy. He's, he does have a half plate, uh, armor on him and he is, uh, if he is armed, he's usually armed with a shield and a long sword. Okay. So they're, 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 they're mainly combat specialists, not like a specific crew role. Yeah, not in particular a normal crew role, but they do seem to uh, at least try to help out with any other things going on in the ship in the meantime when they're not in combat. Yeah. Since they're not particularly skilled in those ranges, they'll like uh, help uh, Trenton when he's trying to help co uh, cook. Like they'll get him some of the stuff he needs in the kitchen, or if uh, uh, Gunter is in need of extra supplies up on the deck if he needs repairs done, they'll run and get stuff for him. I think uh, Galeno will stop looking at the idol and uh, but set it down somewhere like uh, but go uh, help out in the kitchen or something. Okay, so you'll you'll help out with the meal or at least one of the meals during the day. I'm not even going to force rolls on the cooking. I'm going to say that uh, it's you, uh, people are taking their time, and with a little bit of help they're getting, they can make a meal without too much issue. Wait, what? Uh, I'm sorry, what's going on? Uh, the last thing Vilana just mentioned was that she was going to help with uh, cooking at least one of the meals. I'm just oh. saying that I'm not forcing rolls for meals right now because it's like you're not in a panic. People have been practicing yeah. their jobs now, so it's like a take a half hour and you've got a fully well done yeah. meal. Ta da. Especially because we have a professional cook that would probably make sure she doesn't screw anything up. No, that's yeah. not how you skin Friends. a fish. But that's not how you roll either. It's just that she's there to help, aka, she's not going to roll anything and he gets a bonus. <laughs> um. So I take it that's about it for the first day. Uh, just do the usual stuff, and then when it gets late night, you all take shifts, uh, making sure the yeah. boat is going the right direction and yeah. keep an eye on things. Because unfortunately, you can't just tiny hut your way out of guarding a boat. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, that, that, that boat's going to go God knows where if you don't keep an eye on it. Lehman's tiny boat. <laughs> <laughs> Toy boat. Toy boat, toy boat. 
<laughs> it, was, it, was, it was the mansion when you just cast the mansion spell over your, your boat. <laughs> oh yeah, they, there's totally never going to be a boat or other people there when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> immediately sink another boat. Sorry. Yeah, and I'm sorry. They never made Liaman's tiny steamship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, it'd be it'd be interesting, but still. Liaman's not so tiny ship barrier. <laughs> Anyways, uh... Liaman's running gag. <laughs> Uh, right, so next day, I have already rolled for the direction. This time, the air, the wind is coming from the uh, northeast, which means you have got full-on sail. With only a slight tweak, you're basically running the ship at full speed. Also, Matt, roll a d4. Roll a d4. Wind strength. Uh, oh, is there a wind strength thing? Yeah. Um, actually... That's probably not important right now. It's not a big deal. I would, yeah, I'd be more worried about wind if it was, like, in the middle of combat and it was particularly strong and fucking people's ability to hit one another. With sails, as long as you got wind, it's sails and you're already going full pelt yeah. easily. But just to know, there is four types of wind. Uh, dead wind, which is... Just, yeah, you got nothing happening. Light wind, medium wind, and heavy wind. And heavy winds uh, are nice for sailing, but not nice for holding onto the deck. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like storm weather, essentially, is what that is. And we're yeah. not in the middle of storms, so there's no need to worry about that. Yep, and there's no drawbacks to medium wind. It's just stronger than light wind. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to do this, but can we take a quick break? I gotta use the bathroom. Sure. Oh, I still got a drink here. Hello, drink. But yeah, but yeah, Matt. If you if you want to read on it, um, <sighs> Captains and Cannons, uh, page I think it's fifteen. You have it in PDF. Yes. Yeah, the bottom of PDF page or page fifteen in the PDF. Weather and terrain. Mm -hmm. And by the way, your D eight roll was right on the money. Number one is north. Hey. Number ten goes around. But yeah, this uh, is the easiest of... system to come up with off the top of your head. Ta da! Yeah. Uh. uh While well, Ozzy's taking a break, can we role play? Sure. It's essentially the start of the next day. What you up to? Uh, Valenia's just gonna walk around in the deck and do a crewman around and just kind of hang on deck. Just awkwardly hanging out on deck. <laughs> okay. Um, like, are you doing this, like, first thing in the morning, or? Uh, I guess first thing in the morning, just kind of see the sunrise, you know? Yep, you're up early. You come out to see the sunrise. Geralt has already gone uh, out of bed by that point, and uh, yeah, as you're just watching the sunrise, you already hear the two barbarians come marching up and start their practice as usual every morning. Actually, a little different. No. Valona comes up, goes to the front of the ship, and jumps off. Okay. About a minute passes, and then she climbs up the back of the ship. Uh, I'm back. All right. What exactly are you doing? Taking a bath. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to have you roll for that climb back up. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting this to be hard. It would be either... Uh... Uh, what are the one, two I'm looking for? Uh, it'd be either acrobatics or athletics. Oh, it's going to be athletics. So, yeah. Give me a roll on that. Give me a moment. I need to get my sheet back up. <laughs> so, the barbarian lady has decided the first thing she's going to do this morning is to jump off the ship and take apparently take a quick bath and climb back on the back of the ship. 
saying this for us, he's sick. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of gathered that. <laughs> Yeah, you just yeah. see the the barbarian um, woman take off the front of the ship, probably you, butt ass naked. You, you, <laughs> rolled, you rolled with advantage, John. Oh, uh, actually, well, yeah, you need to turn that off. Actually, what was your first first roll, roll was an eleven. Eleven plus three with, plus four is seventeen. So that's still pretty dang high. Actually, it would have been eighteen, but yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. It would have been eighteen. Uh, you maybe at one point have a slight slip um, to climb up, but you quickly rebound and just without issue score you back up the ba uh, the back of the ship. As you're, you're doing this, the necromancer literally watches you take off the front, and then a few moments later, as she's just l looking around like what the fuck, you just she just looks back and sees you climbing back on top of the boat. She uh, looks at Felona and just goes, "How do you maintain your figure?" Wait, what? How do you maintain your figure? Yeah. She just looks confused at you. And then shrugs it off and grabs her sword and basically starts practicing. Yeah, I was going to say, do, do, was Azina here when, the, when that happened? I don't know. This, this is the this first was, thing that Azina does in the morning. Because this is first thing in the yeah, morning. Cause, yeah, because th this was like probably half hour after dawn. <laughs> if that. Yeah, literally, the necromancer is out on the deck, watching the full-on horizon light up. And all of a sudden, Barbarian comes out. Barbarian runs off the front. Sploosh! Wait, the hell? All of a sudden, a few moments later, uh, uh, shakes head, getting water off her. <laughs> as she climbs back up on the back of it. Right oh yeah, there was, there, was probably, there was probably some vigorous head shaking. Uh, but I also assume actually no I can't even assume that with you uh, I assume she doesn't care if she's soaking wet and possibly naked she just goes right back into training right she is soaking wet and naked and then training when she is dry she will get dressed <laughs> she starts training solo a few moments later Garoff shows up he kind of raises an eyebrow shrugs and gets his gear out to get practicing as well Uh, so anything else you guys want to do that day? You you got a two for the wind, so you're going basically full tilt for the boat. Hello? <sighs> really, computer? Right, not computer. Okay, you guys can hear me. Uh, give it a moment. It's the computer is thinking. Hasn't done this in a while. And it's annoying that's doing it in the first place. Come on, any day now. Even if, it, uh, sound even if it says it doesn't there, need it. Finally. Bagels? Hello. Andrew. Okay, so you heard me say bagels. Yes. You need you need You need you need to take a that... day off, Matt, and just sit there and scan disc and defrag your computer. Even if it says it doesn't need it. Um, what I was going to, what I was saying that you didn't hear me saying, uh, before you started asking us what, what else we want to do, uh, I was going to say, Azina probably looks at the naked Thelona training with her sword and, and says, well, if it was anyone else, that would probably be a bad idea, but who's going to try anything with Thelona? <laughs> and, uh, Valina just looks at the, stares at the naked Thelona, lifts the front of her dress, looks down. And just kind of folds her arms and just walks downstairs back down low deck embarrassment. 
Azin uh, sets up one of the empty kegs that has already been used for target practice previously to so it, do. So to it do, has like a, a few dozen holes in it. Yeah, I'm gonna use it for target practice with, with my throwing daggers. Which I'll just roll for shits and giggles. Let's see if I'm awful. At, no, apparently I'm pretty good at hitting stationary kegs. <laughs> Wish, 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 wish. Well, it's not like they have a dex bonus. Yeah, but I rolled a 20. <laughs> a 20 yeah, I see so. that. <laughs> Feet are hitting close to the bullseye. If not already exactly on it. Mm -hmm. it. Means you might want to back up a bit, but then again, that might be where the barbarians are sparring. There's also the fact that throwing daggers only have so much distance before you're at a disadvantage. I'm st I'm actually kind of surprised that Lena takes uh, Polona's nakedness so, so over the top still. You've been dealing with this for over two weeks now. <laughs> she probably compares herself to other women. Too much. Probably. <laughs> you're on paint, probably. A very sulky, probably, it sounded like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, when, I, when actually everybody else wakes up, finally, um, I, I realize that I actually still have my five regular daggers in addition to my Atlantean ones mm. um, because of the fact that I stopped using the regular ones because I got fancy ones now. Um I actually uh, place them in a, like a circle on top of one of the kegs, and I say, "Anyone need a spare dagger?" To like the crew members. Um. Actually, since he doesn't have a lot, you know what? Um. No, nah, Nurster would actually kind of raise his eyebrow at the offer and go, Actually, I don't have anything for ranged. And kind of come over to inspect them. It's just like, oh, yeah, they're not bad build, and I don't have anything for throwing or anything, so that, that wouldn't be a bad choice. Yeah, after a few adjustments, you uh, you notice that he does finally have a spot in his belt that he can put the daggers away for now. How many daggers was it? Five. I got four Atlantean ones, and I stopped using the the regular ones. So afterwards, and the I Atlantean put, ones I, I, are hard to miss after you're you've yeah. even done using them, so they haven't really gotten lost yet. Right. And I I actually because of the fact that I wasn't using the regular ones anymore, I had thrown my regular ones on like the loot my loot notes so oh. i remember i just i was looking at the thing with the, the list of the names of the crew members is on the same uh text document and i was like oh wait i have these five daggers sitting here i should do something with those okay And that's five of them. Boom. Yeah, I mean, when as he's inspecting them, I, I do I do say those serve me well. Pretty sure a couple of them hit a night gaunt. You mentioned that he kinda you see his eyes immediately dart back up to you. He kinda seems to study you for a moment and I'm gonna actually see if he can roll a decent perception. Actually, if it wants to roll, because, uh, yeah, I'm still in edit mode. There we go. Fifty-fifty. He can't read you extremely well, but he reads you well enough to kind of go, She's not lying. He kind of then looks back down at the daggers. Huh. Not every day you find a dagger that's had a victim quite that nasty. Interesting. You might have to tell me about that one sometime. And he's slowly fitting them into his belt.
<laughs> that tail's not as heroic as it might as you might think though off the top of your head. <laughs> I'm not saying that out loud, but <laughs> because that mostly involved us hiding behind the evolved and throwing shit at them. Well, if you didn't do that, you'd all get murdered. <laughs> yeah, because there's a fucking hallway full of damn things. <laughs> The entire the Theobald yeah. sitting up in front, swinging wildly as the rest of you are covering behind him, throwing things and going, ah, ah, don't kill us. <laughs> we were basically really lucky that the freaking passageway was that narrow. <laughs> also, you're very lucky the GM didn't suddenly decide, you know what, they're going to try and fucking fly. <laughs> oh. Which the GM could have done, I would add, but he was being particularly nice or forgetful that day. I'm not sure which. Or, or you, you had the realization in the middle of combat, these things are stronger than I thought they were. What have I done? <laughs> uh, that was actually what I thought about when I suddenly realized, oh, I have a boss one of these who's lurking in the back. You know what? He's never going to come out, and he's just going to randomly disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to gauge the situation and go, okay, I didn't scale this properly. Yes, right. as the GM, you have the right to scale things back when you realize, ooh, this is getting a little difficult. <laughs> right. I, I suddenly got... turned this into a grindhouse, and it could get worse if I really wanted to, but I won't. This is why yeah. I'm here. <laughs> well, that's why the Barbarian was there in the first place. It ends up that the Cleric was actually a better tank, while the Barbarian was still a good scrapper. <laughs> yeah, because the Cleric had the better armor on. Yeah, they were still getting hits on the Barbarian even on his high armor. And they were all out of healing spells, I believe, at the time already, so it's just like, oof. Yeah, we were, we were grasping at straws to beat those things, but we, we did it. <laughs> you did it and you got your Atlantean shit, at least some of it. <laughs> anyway... Uh, anything else you guys want to do on the second day out? The yeah, second day out is going to get you much further than the first day did. I'd say oh, yeah. you're out to about the V on uh, Shadapur here. Well, yeah, it's pretty much just going to be balled up in a room. She's just going to remain in the room all day? Yeah, just all balled up. Uh, Garrel comes in and out once in a while, just checks up on you, making sure you're doing okay. Uh, uh, one time comes sure. by with tea. one time time he comes by with tea. Another time he comes by with a snack from the galley. No, no uh, what I picture is he comes in, just pats her head. He's like, "Okay, you're okay." He just walks out. <laughs> you're <laughs> okay. You'll do fine. You said, <laughs> you said this will get us to where? Uh, you currently are getting, just going to uh, Santa Santa Pur. Yeah. Uh, oh, where where you are exactly right now? You are out to the V in the valley at C on the left one here. Oh, we're halfway there. <laughs> oh, we're living on there. Um, take oh, my yeah, hand. I'll on never see a note. <laughs> it's really hard to do much of anything when you're out at sea. Okay. I just, you know, use my spyglass and keep an eye out for any other ships. I will say that uh, you do occasionally see other ships out, but they do seem to be more... Uh, the few that you do manage to get little quick glimpses of do seem to be following normal trade routes. And matter of fact, a lot of them tend to have uh, the purple-colored uh, purple Turian flags, which means that they're definitely uh, the normal locals. So they're obviously merchants of some kind. So it seems like a few of them have finally come flying back to the shoreline. Yeah. All right. Well, that afternoon will be the same as yesterday. Arrow practice? Mm-hmm. I need to make sure they know what they're doing, so until we get a uh, good round where they're all hitting well. Ugh. Garoff just has the worst time of it today. Yesterday he was doing okay. Today he's just all thumbs. He almost damn near shoots himself, but thankfully he didn't roll a one, so he didn't. So, was, what's his name? Sutai? Uh, Subotai. Subotai. Uh, I'm mean, not going to get that right. First few Subotai. Times. Subotai. 
And then you say quickly. That's the way he says it. <laughs> Subotai. Subotai. So, Belina, he's probably the most only elderly person on this ship, right? Oh, he's he's by far older than anyone else on this boat. But he, even for his age, he looks like he could still put up a fight if he wanted to. So she's going to knock on Subotai's door. Um, I guess you've happened to find him one time that he's in his room, sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the... He said yes. I uh, hear is she goes, uh, she kind of stutters and goes, I, this is a bit of an awkward question, but where I come from, elders are always willing to give advice about problems. Do you give advice? <laughs> he kind of stops and thinks about that for a moment, then kind of smiles. I think I've been giving advice most of my life, to be honest, but sure, what troubles you? Dead silence. <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> I try to say this while laughing. Um, so, I have this boyfriend. Ah, the mixed bagging, yes. Who often trains with a girl that's more well endowed than me every morning. He shrugs. Yes. Did I feel jealous? He he kind of thinks about it for a second to uh, the right words to put to it, and then he kind of slowly turns back to you. If you're asking about whether or not you should be worried that he is looking at her with interest, I highly doubt it. If, if he was really that interested, the, I know Sumerians very well, he would have made some sort of notice or move upon that already by now. Is it alright to feel envious? Certainly. Not everyone gets everything that they would desire in, in themselves physically. But to be worried about it, I don't think so. Just accept, accept the fact that you are who you are and do the best you can with what you have. I suppose you're right. And uh, she goes, and uh, she kind of goes, gives a bow and goes, thank you for your time and just... Uh, certainly. Oh, may I give uh, one point of advice? Sure. Corset. And with that, he smiles <laughs> and closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> He's he doing it honestly teasing, but it's not a bad idea if the, if she's that worried. And it's not like the dang things don't exist here. Yeah, she goes and makes a shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> shopping list, <laughs> top, list underlined, yeah, underlined, yeah, underlined, highlighted, corpses. written in red ink, <laughs> corset. corset. <laughs> circled five times <laughs> nods and walks away <laughs> um I was going to spend the day mostly practicing her flute okay uh actually I was just going to finish rolling these really quick uh I believe um Oh, what was it? Uh, uh, Theobald was also in the practice. He does okay. He's roughly the same spot he was the day before. Maybe a, a few more missed shots today. And Giselle, she's improving, but she's just barely hitting it. So he, she's just, she's almost caught up to Theobald's level. <laughs> yeah, Geralt needs, uh, Geralt is just all kinds of not getting it with the bow. Uh, anyway. Practicing out on the bridge. Yeah. Playing up quite the tune for a little while. Keeping spirits up.
Heck, heck, you're probably even doing it while you're on duty for uh, steering the boat, and you probably even do a half dance around it for a few moments before going back to it. <laughs> Someone in the crowd says, yeah, you're this close to make a musical out of this. Duh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates of Hyboria. <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody br breaks out singing, I've got a dream from Tangled. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I would laugh if Lone is the one that collects unicorns. Uh, no. <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> oh, it's time for the crew to let it go. <laughs> uh, Thelona Thel would, 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 uh, uh, would, would, uh, collect, uh, I don't know, I'll, uh, ceramic battle axes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they wouldn't be ceramic. <laughs> that one's for chopping heads. That one's for chopping limbs. That one's for bloodletting. <laughs> and that one. Oh. Yeah, the weapon store is her personal toy store. And these pulls out two little ones that are barely bigger than a fork are for dinner. I think I have a, a two little miniature battle axe. It's like a fork knife. <laughs> both of uh, them have sharpened edges so you can cut, and both of them have a spiked tip so you can uh, poke whatever it is you're eating and put in your mouth. Formal <laughs> dinner. People there are using, you know, the small fork, the big fork, the butter knife, the bread knife. Thelona's just there with a with a freaking ba bastard sword cutting the meat. <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna need to go back and look at the VOD from last week so I can remember what exactly it was I said when I did the Dragula parody. Because <laughs> I don't remember what I said other than I replaced Dragula with Hyboria. Oh, and with that, we're going to say that that uh, concludes day two on the sea. <laughs> and the GM is now going to roll for the wind is going the next day. Oh, look, it's two again. So this could be a day where you actually get all the way there in one go. <sighs> it's because, yeah, the, a lot of that uh, previous day was just the second day because the first day was such a slow slog. So the second day, you're looking to possibly get to uh, Sultanapur within the uh, time of yeah. evening. And as you're progressing along, you do spot... Uh, actually, give me perception checks on uh, Xena. And I think both Subutai and... Uh, uh, Boom! Well, Subutai and I'm looking at the wrong thing, so I can't find them quickly. What uh, did I roll? I don't know. What did you roll? Let me look. Holy shit. You <laughs> rolled a two. A negative one. Uh, I, I rolled a two, plus three, minus one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're contemplating your navel. <laughs> You're contemplating your name. Uh, uh, oh, you're you're oh, contemplating oh, how the clouds look fluffy today. I really... Next time I get a stat increase, which is a long way off because we're level 8 now, uh, I'm going to have to raise my wisdom to get rid of that minus 1. Oh, yeah. that's There's a thousand reasons that's bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, Roger kind of thinks he's seen something off to the east, but he's not initially sure. Uh, not long afterwards, though, uh, Subutai was poked his head out and was doing the usual bit of having a check on things when he immediately starts running up to the crow's nest and talks on Roger to look again. And they both look, and they are dead certain that they're seeing uh, these smaller boats coming up on you guys from the east. 
from like those from like that island area. Yeah, basically. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm I'm sure they probably are telling me about this. Yeah, as soon as they notice, uh, Suatai keeps watching, and Roger quickly rushes down. Just literally, you see him slide down the rope really quickly and run up to you, Captain. We got boats coming from the east. Uh, I, I yell out, everybody, prepare for potential combat. Archers to station. And then it's kind of like pointing to Garoth and the other going, stand here, stand here. <laughs> <laughs> get get Garoth, uh, stand still. You get Theobald with a bow to stand uh, in a spot. And you, I assume you're giving another bow to Thelona? Or not Thelona, well, um... Yeah, Felona has her and Felona already has her. Uh, one to Giselle. Yeah. I'm trying to think, is Actually, anyone else uh, capable of a bow? There's still a fourth bow there. I, could, I was I was just training the three people I knew were barbarians. I could use it if it really comes down to it. Um, but I was gonna, but uh. Do you have martial weapons or not? I don't recall now. Yes, I do. Oh, because you actually the, do. The, uh, do yeah, you only, well, you have throwing daggers, which aren't bad, yeah. but you don't want to lose them out here either. Right. I, but the thing is, I have martial weapons because of the the bard college I took gave me martial weapons and medium uh, armor. Okay. So yeah, you uh, can use the fort bow if you want to. Then you you get to sit with arrows right away. But uh, and Suatai is I, sitting up in the crow's nest, and he's actually up there already, bow and. Uh, arrow in hand uh, notched into the bow and kind let of me, watching. Let me actually add a long bow to my character sheet so that I have it in case I need it in the future. Because if it really comes down to it I'll buy an extra long bow if somebody else needs to use these at some point. Okay. And Matt I'm lighting the brazier. Alright. So you're and... using up some of the fuel right away and uh, getting people ready to light up. Mm-hmm. Getting the pitch heated up. Yep. And that's basically being put amidships. Yeah, can yeah. We, can, we, can we get the ship map up again? Oh, yeah. It'd probably be, like, right about where the canoe is, technically. The canoe is mostly just there to say that the canoe's on the boat. Mm. Okay, so, aside aside from the fact that I'm going to grab one of the longbows, I'm also going to um, get have my uh, grappling hook out and drop it on the ground next to me, so I have it if I want to use it for something. Yeah, you notice mine's out as well. Actually, you, you got yours for a similar reason why I why I'm thinking about mine now. <laughs> Boarding actions. That's the reason I got one for Garoth too. The two strongest people. Yeah. Three strongest people, if you include me. I didn't know you had one. In character, I didn't know you had one. You were there. Well, I think you were there when I bought it because we bought it at the. Um... That town on the way to um, where we got all the where we got all the heavy clothing for the north. I bought it okay. when we were in that town. So you might have seen me purchase it, and, but didn't think much about it at the time. So actually, the, yeah, these three in particular are going to crowd up to this catapult because they're going to get ready to fire it. Where is this? Uh... Actually, I'm going to push the boat back a little bit. Are are they coming? Wait a minute. We're heading south. Yes, and you're heading south, so they'll be east, so they be coming from this direction. Yep. Okay, so I actually should definitely be over here. Yep. Basically, I got the bow. I got the bow ready. I have an arrow. Or, uh, arrow. Um, I'm ready if I need to do anything. Uh, I'm going to say Roger is currently waiting. steering. Sibutai is up in the crow's nest. These three are there, ready for uh, shooting that catapult, and, and I'm actually, gonna say these two are gonna run for this catapult. Because because Rogers in the crow's nest anyhow. I actually oh. I I actually uh, signal for. Him. in the in the crow's nest. Okay, since he's Rogers, up there. Rogers at the helm. Since, since Supertie up there, I actually uh, signal for him to to raise our flag since it should be up there anyhow. Oh, uh, just uh, oh wait. The pirate flag. Raise your uh, your your black and white flag. Okay. Yeah. He kind of. He's this. This is the first time, probably uh, one of the first couple times he's actually seen it up close. He kind of looks at it and just goes, "Huh," and then has a slight smile and ties it up and 
lets it fly as he's continuing to sit in the crow's nest. That's basically it. If, you know, intended to be as a warning that we're not just a, just a freaking regular crew of sailors if you're going to fuck with us. All right. Speaking of which, now that we've been, now that we've, uh, now that we've been made aware of these ships, do we see any flags or anything on them? Um, actually, uh, as they close in, you do see a familiar flag you've seen before, not too long ago. All of you, except for the two, or actually technically the three newest members. Uh, you see the black flag of a skull with a uh, similar blade in the mouth with uh, or similar dagger in the mouth with crossed blades behind it. This is the same people who previously had the small longboats before. Oh, and... so they're going to want vengeance. Okay. I'm lighting my arrow on fire. <laughs> Are these the same kind of basically longboat kind of things? Yeah, they're very they're basic longboats. They seem to be uh, coming at you as full pelt. Not only are the flag the uh Masks open, trying to get you as quickly as can as they can, but uh, at least four out of the five people on these boats are already paddling as hard as they can. Okay. Um, people don't far... learn not, not to attack bigger ships. <laughs> I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and I'll check how big this area is. Okay. About how far out are they now? I'm actually contemplating the moving your boat so that way I can get you all in the same spot. So let me move Wait, tokens. It, it, I was gonna say, isn't our boat technically part of the map? Yes, but it's not actually the background. I can move the boat too. I just have to go to the background layer to move it. Now well, you moved everybody, but you haven't yep. moved the boat. Now go to the oh, background no, layer. Water. Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's not what I want you to do. Is that it? There that looks go. it. Yeah, yeah that's, that, right. that's, that's where we were. So, as a matter of fact, as these boats come rushing in, they even have to turn... They uh, You've slowed down, but they have to turn slightly, too, to keep up with you. And you notice that the first boat here already has a very familiar face on it in the front of it. It's that barbarian guy you have in the boat you never got to sink. <laughs> yeah, the guy that actually said what the fuck and turned and left because he didn't want to die. As a matter of fact, as he sees your flag more clearly and then sees what boat it is again, you just see his light eyes light up like this was meant to be kind of moment. Oh, so he's actually wanting to throw down. Yeah, he just wasn't going to throw down with half a crew. <laughs> right. Now they're taking water. Ah! Oh no, I don't know how to swim. Uh, crew. Crumb to the crop. And I'm gonna, I'm going to nod the people next to me. Use the, use the brazier. Light your arrows on fire. I was going to take a quick measure how close you all are. Ooh, just over a hundred feet from the catapult. Which How far are the catapults the again? <laughs> um, I think 100 feet might be within catapult range. You you had the rules for that, so I don't know because we never officially had them. Well, that's close enough for longbows without rolling at disadvantage. Yep. I think so they might be just a little up, bit out of range get... for some of the longbows, though. Uh, I, no, that's no. longbows. Longbows are 150. With with it without losing uh, the the. Uh, I didn't measure there. from them though. I measured from the catapult. Oh, yeah. And you want to actually measure to the sail, because that's my target. Well, in case that in that case it's like 120 feet yet, which is still fine yeah. for long bows. Yoink. 130, actually. 150 feet is standard range for a longbow. Okay, so they come rushing in, and you're already just like, it's ready, Twing, I assume. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's probably ready, knock, 
released. But are you gonna have? To, you, do we need to wait for you to add the other bows boats before we start? The other boat is actually behind this, so I'll be moving that as soon as it's their turn to move. They're they're still off the map. Yeah. Yeah. So are, do we need to roll for initiative or? Something? Yes. Now it's gonna be turn for initiative, but I'm gonna say since you guys are the most prepared for this, uh, going in right away, and the guys is basically going, rush them. You guys are the ones that are ready because the other people are still busy with oars. Okay. Oof. Oh, wait, um, that's right. I need to select my token. Let me see here. I need to get you. 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 You're giving yourself so many characters to micromanage. <laughs> At least I can manage them faster now. You know, uh, I'm gonna, I was going to say, maybe we should set up this fight and then save it for next time because we're literally down to a half we're, an hour. Yeah, we we're done to a half hour, be... and this might take the, at least an hour. So, yeah, we'll do this setup, yeah. and it'll all be safe for next time at least. Uh, the, like, the thing is, like, I, I'd be all for going and continuing if I didn't have to work early tomorrow. I was like, I'd rather not get into a big fight and lose track of time. Because I remember the last ship battle we had. Yeah, I'm hoping this one's going to be a little easier because we're more prepared. There. I'm last one wasn't even that hard. We just kept missing. The problems we kept missing. Yeah, we have the clock up. And for everyone who's on screen... <laughs> Trent is going... Uh... Trentian is going first, and we start next time. But yeah, since yeah, since we're uh, just starting this fight, and we only have a half hour left of our normal time, we're going to cut it here. So, see you all in two weeks. Have a good night. Have a good night. Later.